sure I'm on airplane. I am. Am I here? Yes, okay. Beautiful. 12 o'clock. Oh wait, I wanna do one more thing. All these different things that I never had to think about. Can you hear me? Yeah? I'm guessing this means yes. Good. Okay. Um, good morning. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, so, prop-wise, all we really need are something like blocks, which you can use or you cannot use, um, and then a thick towel, or a blanket, anything that can act as a supportive, a support for your back bend. So we're gonna start in a restorative, a really super gentle restorative back bend. So I'm folding up my blanket so that it looks like this, kind of like a mock bolster, but not nearly as thick. And I'm just gonna lay it down, kind of near the back of my mat, to support my back when I lay down, okay? Um, your blocks can be near the top of your mat if you're using them. And then um, just get yourself settled, recline yourself down. And the way you want to be situated here is with your shoulder heads just off of the back edge of your blanket or your towel so that your blades are really on the ground, but it kind of like clips the bottom tips of your shoulder blades and encourage them encourages them further down the back as you roll your shoulders off of the back. It should create this openness in the top of the chest. And then just take your arms into cactus shapes on either side. And then the legs will come into constructive rest. So feet as wide as the other edges of your mat, knees knocked together. And we're going to do a simple thing, a simple pattern, repetition with the breath and the action of swallowing to stimulate the vagus nerve, which is um, directly related to stimulating our parasympathetic nervous system to help us all de-stress and chill our stress response in the body, which has been firing chronically for the past several months. So, just get settled, close your eyes. And we're going to just let your bones settle towards the floor. Take nourishing breaths with an emphasis on your out breath. And imagine all of the fluids in your body kind of settling towards the back and helping to spread your skin out on the mat. And there's this heaviness and this release. Now, take a slow and, and rather uncontrolled inhale, just a little bit slower than you would naturally breathe in. And you'll take the slightest pause at the top and just swallow. You don't have to swallow saliva, but just do the action of swallowing. And then exhale and let your air out softly, slowly. At the base of your exhale, I just want you to pause and hold your air out. You'll be able to do this comfortably for some period of time. And then when you feel the sensation swell that you need to take a breath in, just breathe in. The top of your inhale, swallow. And then breathe out. Pausing at the base of your exhale without tensing your abdomen. You're just, um, you know, being calm as you wait for the body to breathe itself again. You inhale when you feel you need to. Swallow at the top. Exhale.
next time you breathe in, I want you to just let your breath remain continuous and relaxed. You can let go of that pattern. And just let your knees tip over to the right side of your mat. Swivel them over the right. Cross your right ankle over your left outer knee. And then stretch your left thigh bone forward and pressurize it down towards the floor. Hook your tailbone under, and that's going to really allow you to um, create a deep stretch in your iliacus and some of the other hip flexors in front of the left hip. Extend the thigh forward and down. And for some of you, not all of you, you'll uncross your right ankle and then take your left foot in your left hand, tuck the toes under so you come into a half year asana through the left leg, planting your right foot flat to the floor. And those of you in that half year asana shape, you'll feel your whole pelvis root to the ground um, in a square kind of equal way. Otherwise, you're just staying in that first iliac stretch. Just two breaths wherever you're at. Everyone is elongating the tailbone towards the backs of the knees. One more breath. Okay, if you're in half your asana, slide your left foot forward until your foot comes to the ground. If you're in the iliac stretch, uncross your ankle, tip the knees up to the ceiling, and then over to the left side. And we'll do the whole shebang. So left ankle crosses over right, outer knee, outer thigh, and you are sliding the, the right knee forward and down towards the ground. Hook your tailbone under, that really is a game changer in what you're sensing and feeling through the right hip. And then all the while, you're just breathing your body in the most calm, nurturing, soothing way so that you're shifting your state of being. Take your half virasana if you did so on the first side. And your right heel will really slip outside of your right hip, left foot flat on the ground. Elongate your tailbone forward. That's what creates the material change and, and the really um, effective opening of the right leg. One more breath. And just slip your right foot forward until the sole of the foot is on the floor. Uncross your ankles, swivel the knees up to the ceiling, and then just let the knees super gently, just a couple of inches in either direction, swivel right and left. <coughs> just massaging your SI joints in the back of the pelvis and the sacrum. And then roll to one side, use your hands, and come on up, right? And, you know, anyone who has sensitive knees, you can lay your, your towel down or your blanket down to keep throughout practice, but, you know, I'm just gonna scrap mine because I think it's more of a distraction than it is um, a benefit. <clears throat> but no judgment if you want your knees to feel nice and calm. I want you to come onto your hands and your knees. I'm going to fix my hair, but what you'll be doing while I put my hair in a bun is walk your arms forward until your forehead comes to the ground. You might need to stick a block under your head if you feel really tight. And you'll be in this pose, which we call puppy pose. Your hips are stacked over your knees, and you're extending the torso down and away from the pelvis. So it feels like a spine of a downward-facing dog but it's like, oh, it feels so good. It feels like such a release for the torso. Down towards the floor on the diagonal. Now, if you wanna open your armpits even more, come up onto your fingertips, like you have little muffins underneath your hands, and it'll feel <clears throat> like a little extra extension through your armpits, but turn your inner upper arms up. So your biceps are rolling up, armpits turning towards the face as you widen the base of the neck and the inner shoulder heads. Those really flexy friends draw your front ribs up towards your back and just have a little bit of integrity in the abdomen. And then pressurize your fingertips, your palms down. Look forward, crawl your fingers further forward, Plant your elbows down as your chest shifts forward, 
and then come into a sphinx pose. Now, you might need to slightly readjust your arms, but I want you to um, firm your legs by pushing the tops of the feet down. Burrow your pubis down so your tailbone hooks back. Tone your low belly a little bit and try to lift it slightly away from the floor. Push down with your forearms. Pull with your elbows. Widen with your outer forearms. Maintain this. Take a big breath in and keep pulling, keep pulling. As you exhale, turn your left forearm in. You can either stay propped up on your forearm or you can lay down on your belly and rest your forehead on your forearm. Contract your right set of hamstrings so that your heel squeezes to the butt. And with your right hand, I want you to reach back, catch the shoelace side of your foot and draw your heel towards your butt. So anyone that didn't get that half your awesome stretch while in the back bend, you're getting it now. Hook your tailbone back. And if you have the availability in your shoulder girdle, you can turn your fingers to point forward towards the top edge of your mat as you pressurize your heel towards the flesh of the butt. Once your heel can touch the butt, you can go a little bit wider than the butt and pull the heel down further. And then release, come back to your sphinx pose briefly with poise across the chest, activity in the legs. And then turn your right forearm in, hamstring curl your left leg so you feel some tension, some firmness in the back of your left leg. And then take your Ardha Bikasana, half frog pose, and really the tailbone wants to stick up when you do this, but keep working for length in your lumbar spine. And then release your leg. Take your forearms back into your sphinx. Last moment, no tension in the neck and the shoulders. And then release your chest down. Pull your hands underneath your shoulders. Tuck your toes. And then shift your seat all the way back towards your heels. Come up onto your fingertips, extended child's pose, with the most feel good place ever. Walk over to the right side and stretch out your left waist. And then walk over to the left side, breathe into your right waist, right rib cage. And then bring the hands forward onto your mat. Why does the shoulders stamp on your fingertips? As you breathe in, slide your knees slightly further apart. Come forward with your chest for a cow spine. As you exhale, round your spine, shift your butt back to your heels. So flowing cat cow. Breathe in, draw your chest forward through the upper arms. Exhale, dome your back and sit your butt back. One more time with that. Breathe in, the chest moves forward, you look up. Exhale, round your spine and shift your butt back. Ground your palms this time. Inhale, come forward to a quadruped, hands and knees, and replace your knees back into their hips with distance apart. And then tuck your toes, lift your hips. Downward facing dog. And then just take a few breaths to make it your own. So move around intuitively until you start to feel a little more acclimated in this pose. You might, depending on what's, what you're feeling in your body, you might be wanting bent knees. You might be wanting straight legs. So just really start to train your intuitive inner ear. Listen for what you're needing in your practice today. And just consider everything that I, well, everything that I talked to you about today as a suggestion. You lead your own practice always. Okay, let's all take a big breath in together. Exhale, open your mouth, stick out your tongue, lion drawer. As you breathe in, raise your right leg up into a down dog split with square hips. As you exhale, step the ball of your foot halfway up your back only, halfway up the mat. Put the ball of the foot down and then put both knees down on the ground. You're going to stand up on your shins, on your knees. We're going to call this a kneeling lunge. So many of you have done this with me before. I want you to work for symmetry in the pelvis and squareness towards the top of the mat. Pull your right pelvic half back, pull the left side forward, and then pull up, just like you did in space pose, just like you did in your um, uh, on the back stuff. The tailbone elongating will be a theme. Reach your arms over your head, hook your thumbs, and just see if you can crawl your back ribs up while you're neutralizing your pelvis. 
And then take your arms and backstroke them behind you, right thumb on top, interlock your fingers and slide your thumbs down the sacrum. Keep the bend in your elbows and firm your upper arm bones in. Stay here for a second. Really, the effort is all in the pelvis. Inhale, reach the arms up to the ceiling. You can look up. As you exhale, bring your fingertips down onto the floor. First, you engage your back leg, lifting the knee up. I'm not going to do this because it's not good for my pregnant body, but draw your right knee towards your skull. See if your knee can touch your skull. And then step your foot forward to your right thumb. Put your back knee down on the ground. Come on up, Anjana Yasana. So we still have that little bit of pressure in the back kneecap. If it feels too much, just keep pressurizing the, the, back, the back foot down so you can lift some of the weight out of your left kneecap. Scissor your legs and just reach up, 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 up. So we're going to turn our face into the left side of the mat. Swivel your left shin back. So now you're in this kind of parigasana prep. And you'll lean towards your right leg. This is like my favorite pose. So I've been doing it a lot. <laughs> Hopefully you like it too. So anything you want in the arm. You can put your elbow on top of the thigh. You can slip the elbow inside of the knee. You can reach for your ankle. Whatever feels good. But open the left side and rotate your heart up towards the ceiling. Cut your right sitting bone down so it elongates your right waist. And then come on up, right? Both arms sweep over your head. Straighten your right leg and turn your foot in. And then take your left fingertips to the floor and then move into a modified side plank in the other direction. You can ground your palm as well. And don't feel like you have to be absolutely linear and sharp through the top. Be more curvy, open up the right side body. And you're really noticing how much of the side body we're opening today. And then you'll just swivel to face the front of your mat. It's nothing formal, just turn forward, look forward, tuck your back toes, use your blocks if you want, straighten your front leg, fold into pyramid, Parsvottanasana. And you'll just get acclimated. Feel like you're pulling some of the weight out of the sole of your right foot by pressurizing the hands down and pulling the right femur head deeper into the hip socket. Move your pubic bone back so that you really feel it pull the upper attachment of the hamstrings, but don't overdo it because so you don't want to be super sore tomorrow. Okay, now as you breathe in, I want you to bend your front knee forward. Roll to the pinky toe edge of your right foot, and then just let your right thigh, if you look at it head on, you'll let your right thigh open up to the side, like this. Now, it's important that you flex your toes so that the inner arch of your right foot is still supporting the structure of your body, even though the sole of the foot is not entirely rooted to the ground. Open your collarbones, and try not to be a wet noodle just like dumping into the basement. I want you to kill, still keep structure through the left leg. And then straighten front leg, put the sole of the foot down, fold towards the leg. Breathe in, bend the front knee, move your blocks to the side. Step into a plank pose. Pitch forward and lower down onto your bellies. I'm going to do this a little different, so don't look at me. But once you're on your belly, I want you to straighten your right arm up into the shape of a capital Y. So if your arms went out, into a V. That's the trajectory of your right arm. And you'll roll onto the right side of your body. Do what you want in your legs. You can arc your top leg back and behind you. You can tree pose the legs. You can keep them side by side. Take a big breath in. Slide your right shoulder onto your back. And then roll down onto your bellies. And you'll take the other side. Left arm goes out on the diagonal like a capital Y, and you'll roll onto left edge of the body. Right leg arcs back or makes a tree pose, or the leg stays straight. Slip your left shoulder blade onto your back so it really opens the left inner arm and shoulder, and then roll down onto your bellies. Take one cobra pose, arching the back, looking up. And then pass through hands and knees, lift your hips into downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths, and since this, this is the second time you're revisiting this pose, clarify it more. 
longer torso, sharper butt, more weight anchored through the feet and the legs. Left leg lifts up, breathe in. Step the ball of the foot halfway up the mat only. Put both of your knees on the ground. Make sure your legs are still hips width distance. Come on up, right? You're welcome to hook your thumbs. I think I did that first round. And then just work on the pelvis so there's no like um, loss of integrity in the front body. You're really elongating the tailbone down, pulling your belly up, pulling your pubis up. Square the left hip back, the right pelvic cap forward. And then you'll circle your arms behind you. Interlock the fingers, left thumb on top. No tension in the neck and the shoulders. Stretch the arms so you get a bigger opening of the chest. It might feel easier after doing that pec stretch. Reach all the way up to the ceiling. Look up to complete the, the lift of your back bend. Exhale, fold forward, fingertips to the floor. Back knee engages, left knee pulls to the skull for your exhale. Step to your left thumb, put your back knee on the ground. Inhale, rise up, Anjani Asana. Back foot can be pointed or the toes can be tucked. If you have really tight soles of the feet, it could be a benefit to you to keep this, the toes tucked. Rise up while you're working, you're working so much in the legs. It doesn't look like you are, but there's so much activity to support the rising of your chest. And then you'll swivel to the right. Right foot shifts back, left leg is like a box, and then you lean toward left leg for the second side of Parigasana. It's a modified version of gate pose. Rotate your heart up, cut your left hip down, and lean away from the right side. Inhale, come up right. The left leg straightens, the foot turns in, and then you come down onto your right hand and take this modified side plank. Now you'll notice it feels a little more congested for your right knees because of the position of your right shin but it does help you to bow up through the left side. And then you can just stay low without being super formal. Swivel to the front of the mat into a lunge, and you'll straighten your front leg and just fold inch down slowly down the left thigh. Stay here, rather stationary. Use your breath and see if you can equally distribute the weight through your front foot, both in the big toe mound, the pinky toe edge of the ball of the foot, and both sides, inner and outer heels. Bend your front knee forward, roll to the pinky toe edge of your foot, and again, the big toe mound is still seeking the ground, but flex your toes back really actively. Back legs stay super charged, so your hips don't go super low. This is not about moving into the depth of your stretch, but just to kind of lubricate the left hip joint. Ground your left foot, straighten your leg, last time folding. Rebend your knee, move your blocks off um, to the side and forward this time. Step into a plank pose. You can pitch forward and lower down onto your bellies. This time your, your arms are gonna be straight out like a T. Let's do the left side first. So roll onto the left, left edge of your body. Reaching your left arm straight out to the side. Slip the face of the shoulder a little bit away from the ground, as much as feels available to you. And then roll down onto your belly. You'll take the other side. Rolling to right, rib cage, outer edge of the body. And reaching your right arm far, far out. The shoulder wants to get congested, so you kind of have to inch it out as you make that transition. And then roll down onto your belly. You'll take a cow, um, excuse me, a cobra pose. Roll your shoulders onto the mat. And then downward facing dog, lifting your hips. Let's just stay here for a second. One more deep breath, just to calm the body. Okay, let's move with this. Inhale, your right leg lift. Exhale, prepare for your kneeling lunge. Step halfway forward, both knees to the ground. 
We then circle the arms forward and up. And then Baha'i we call this interlocking the hands. Breathe in. Stretch your arms. Lift your heart. Stay for the duration of your exhale. Inhale. Arms reach up. Lift your sternum a little more. Exhale. Fingertips to the ground. Back knee lifts. Breathe in. Right knee to your skull. Exhale. Step your foot forward. Put your back knee on the ground. Breathe in. Come up to Anjani Asana. And right away, swivel to your left. Exhale. Parigasana. Gate pose. Inhale, the arms come up and over your head. Straighten right leg, turn your foot in. Exhale, modified side plank on the left palm. Breathe in, swivel to the front of the mat into a lunge, lifting your back knee. Exhale, straighten front leg and fold. Breathe in, bend the knee, roll onto pinky toe on your front foot. Exhale, straighten the leg and fold. We'll do this one more time. Breathe in. Bend the knee, widen your right thigh. Exhale, straighten the leg, pushing the foot down and forward. Breathe in, step into a plank pose, a little different this time. Exhale, pitch forward, bend your elbows halfway to the floor. Pelvis and thighs come down to the ground. Roll your shoulders onto your back. Exhale, shift back, downward facing dog. Inhale, your left leg lifts up. Step the ball of the foot halfway forward. Put your knees down to the ground. Inhale, reach forward and up. Neutralize your pelvis. Front of the belly lifts. Exhale, circle the arms back and lock your fingers. Left palm on top. Breathe in. The arms stretch long. The chest opens. Stay for your exhale. Slip your shoulders away from your ears. Breathe in. Reach up. Lift your heart. Exhale, fingertips down, back knee lifts. Inhale, left knee to the skull. Exhale, step the foot forward, back knee to the floor. Now come up to Anjani Asana, but know it's just your vehicle to turn open into gate pose. Exhale, lean towards your left leg. Inhale, come up right. As you exhale, round your right palm, swivel your left foot in, straighten your knee. Inhale, turn to face the front of your mat into a lunge. Exhale, straighten front leg and fold. Breathe in, bend the knee, flex the toes back as your thigh widens. Exhale, straighten, round the whole sole of the foot. One more time only. Breathe in, bend the knee, widen the thigh. Exhale, straightening the leg, pushing the pelvis back. Breathe in, the knee bends, you step into a plank pose. Exhale, pitch forward, lower through Chaturanga Dandasana. Put your pelvis and your thighs on the ground so you automatically land in Cobra. Shoulders slip onto the back. Exhale, shift your butt back, downward facing dog. Three breaths, in. Exhale, breathe out. And again, breathe in. This is your second breath. One more. You'll bend your knees and look forward. Journey to the top of your mat into a ride ball. <clears throat> As you breathe in, let your hands drop down and then slip up to your chins. Arch your back, look forward. As you exhale, fold into your legs. Stand up and arc your arms up to the ceiling, or go hostasana, hook your thumbs, and then pull your hands right to the center of the chest. Let's do three rounds of continuous Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach up, gaze up. Exhale, fold to your legs. Breathe in, elongate the spine, forward, look up. Exhale, step right foot, left foot back, bend your elbows. Inhale, take a back bend, either cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, lift your hips, downward facing dog. Take a big breath in, you won't be holding. Exhale, the knees bend, look forward. Step, step, or hop to the top. Inhale, spine elongates. Exhale, fold, and when you do, flip the palms to the ceiling, so back 
of the hands touch the floor. Release your neck. Inhale, stand up. Arms reach up. Gaze up at your thumbs. Exhale, hands to the heart. And release down. Do this again. Inhale, or the hastasana. Or press your palms together. Exhale, fold in half. Inhale, elongate the spine forward. Exhale, left foot, right foot, step back. Bend your elbows halfway to the floor. Breathe into a cobra or an up dog. Exhale, lift your hips. Downward facing dog. Take one breath in only. Exhale, the knees bend. You look forward. Step, step, or hop to the top. Spine elongates as soon as your feet arrive. Exhale, fold, flipping palms to the ceiling. Breathe in, stand up, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart, and release down. One more time, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold deeply into your legs. Offer your chest forward. Step or jump back, bend your elbows. Take a back bend through your inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your hips. Three breaths. Stay for your last breath in. Put your knees on the ground. Now walk your hands forward a bit more. Bring your forearms to the ground. And then take your hands together in a prayer. I want you to inch your elbows in a little bit more. Now, if you have blocks, you could be doing this whole thing up on blocks. I'd say on medium facet. I'm going to put my elbows up on blocks so you have a visual reference. But know that you don't need blocks to um, receive the benefit of this stretch. So you'll walk your knees back as much as is needed. And you'll start to elongate the, the length from your elbows through the armpit, through the outer rib cage. Okay? Now, I like to make an air prayer in my hands, like there's, um, you know, a ball of energy between my palms. It kind of gives me a little bit more of a sense of rotation through my upper arm bones. See if you can try that. And then widen your inner shoulder heads. And the more you extend your chest further back, the more you're going to feel this like big pull through the shoulder girdle at the bottom tips of the shoulder girdle and kind of wraps around the outer edge of the shoulder blades. Your elbows are bending so that your thumbs are seeking the back of the body, though, you know, they, you don't have, more is not always better. So just work in a way that feels appropriate for you. And then again, if you're super bendy, you'll want to feel your front ribs pull up towards your back so that you're not just, you know, like one of my teachers says, like a garbage bag full of water. And I mean that in the most respectful way. Like a garbage bag full of water holds no shape. And we want to hold a boundary here within this deep, deep stretch. Okay, move your hands away from your back. Shift your heart forward over your elbows. Walk your knees forward. Get rid of your blocks if you use them. And then come into a downward facing dog with your new shoulders. It will feel so much more open through your pits. And likely a little bit fatigued. So let's take some of the weight off of the shoulders. Inhale, roll forward into a quadruped. Knees down on the floor. Straighten your left leg back and then spin your heel to the ground. Point your right foot and I want you to lean onto your right hand and reach the left arm up to the ceiling. You're going to float your left leg off of the ground so that it's at the height of your left hip. Now, inwardly spin your airborne leg and then hamstring curl your left leg so that your heel squeezes towards the butt. Stay there for a second, just heating up the back of your left leg. Then I want you to reach back with your left hand, catch your ankle if it's available to you, and then rather than stretching your quadriceps, I want you to kick the foot into the hand so that you become more spherical behind the back of the body. Imagine a huge beach ball fitting in between um, in that negative space in your back. 
and then re-extend your arm and your leg, tone the front of the belly, pull your ribs in, and then square the body to the floor, put the left ball of the foot down on the ground. Take a down dog split, right leg lifting up and back, turn your hips open, bend your airborne leg. Re-extend your legs, square off your hips, put your foot down. Roll forward onto hands and knees, and then right away, straighten your right leg back, spin the ball of the, or spin the whole foot to the ground, lean onto your left hand, right arm reaches up. So, when you feel stable enough, your right leg will lift, and to do this, you naturally have to transfer more weight into your left hand. Inwardly spin your airborne leg. Hamstring curl your right leg. I like to point my foot because it really um, helps me to tense the back of the leg a little bit more. And then reach for your ankle behind you. Now your knee wants to go up to the ceiling. Level your thigh with the floor, and then kick it back. Not up to the ceiling, straight back. Let your belly and your chest go forward like a cow spine. And then release your foot and contain your front body. Square your pelvis and your chest to the floor. Left, right ball of the foot comes to the ground. Left leg lifts up and back for your down dog split. Turn your hips open, bend your knee. Just a nice little interlude from this dynamic movement of starting on the split leg. Okay, if you extend your leg, square off your hips, put your foot down. Let's take one vinyasa just to wipe the sleep clean. Anything you want, a couple of breaths to do so. Downward facing dog move out. Okay, inhale right leg, left hips are square. Step the ball of the foot halfway forward, put both of your knees on the ground, reach forward and up into this kneeling lunge. Circle your arms back and without interlacing, just squeeze your palms together. Hamstring curl your left leg until you can catch your left foot with your hand. Swivel the, the fingers forward if you have that availability in your shoulder and reach your right arm up to the ceiling. Okay, now square the hips forward and then hook your tailbone down. Smooth your front ribs down, raise your back ribs up. Take one more breath. And then release your foot to the floor. Both arms lift up, inhale. Fingertips to the ground as you exhale. Now, straighten your back leg, straighten your front leg until you're standing on the sole of your right foot. Float your left leg up and you'll take a half moon on the right side, okay? Recall the half moon chakrasana you just did on your knee. We'll do the same thing standing. So hamstring curl your airborne leg. Reach back with your left hand for the ankle. Lower the thigh towards the floor and start to kick the foot back. Now, this really throws off the balance to the right side if you're truly kicking behind your torso. So make your chest move in the opposite direction towards left long edge of mat. As you re-extend your arm and leg into half moon, contain your front body. Square your hips and your chest to the floor. Listen, take a big step forward with your left foot like you're walking to the top of the mat. Standing split with square hips. Right leg goes up. And you'll stay here and breathe just for a moment, two moments, three moments. I don't know, I didn't plan it. Breathe. One more breath. Now bend both knees Curl your right kneecap in towards your forehead. Put your feet down, hips width. Inhale, chest lifts halfway. Actually, take your feet together. I'm just going to keep my hips width because of my belly. Inhale, sit to chair pose. Each katasana, arms sweep up. Stay for your exhale, sit a little bit lower. As you breathe in, I want you to stand all the way up. Catch your left wrist with your right hand. You can crisscross your right ankle to the left. And then take a side stretch over to the right. Inhale, step your feet apart, separate your two hands. Catch your right wrist, your right ankle crosses over the left, side bend to the left. Inhale, step your feet together, reach up to the ceiling, and you'll take a chair twist, prayer twist to the right. Okay, I'm doing something slightly different, but you prayer twist to the right. Stay low, inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, prayer twist to the left. So we're not getting stuck in this twist. Inhale, come right back up through the center. Chair pose. Exhale.
exhale, fold to your legs all the way in half. Inhale, extend the spine forward. I want you to come into a warrior three on the right side. So your left leg floats up, arms can come alongside the body, and you'll take a big step back into a crescent, arms sweeping overhead. Just briefly, inhale, straighten front leg. Exhale, take a twist to the right. Prayer twist to the right. I'm gonna take a more open twist. But your left elbow will slip outside of your right thigh. You can push the top hand down into the bottom hand to rebound your left rib cage off of the thigh. Take one more breath here. Exhale your hands to the floor. Down dog split, right leg lifts up and back. Release your right hip. Your hips can be asymmetric here. You can lift your right hip a lot. And then square your hips and step your foot down. Now, the only vinyasa we'll take here is rolling forward into a plank, articulating through the spine and then shifting back to your dog. This is it for standing poses, left leg lifts. Step the ball of the foot, halfway forward, both knees come to the ground, wide and up. Inhale, reach forward and up. Circle the arms back and squeeze the upper arm bones together. Hamstring curl your right leg. Catch your foot and then reach your left arm up to the ceiling. You can take Gyana Mudra through the left hand so your index and your thumb are connected. Other three fingers, extend. Lift up through the front of the hips. It's so hard to square the pelvis here, but do your best. Release your back foot. Inhale, reach back up to the ceiling. Last moment here. Exhale, fingertips to the floor. Right knee straightens, left leg straightens. You're standing on your left leg. Right leg floats up to a half moon. Ardha Chandrasana. And then you hamstring curl your airborne leg. You can, uh, you can stay in your half moon. I didn't say that, but you know, you can always keep it a little easier versus more complicated. Harder is not always better. More is not always better. Grace is always best. So take a pose that feels good. Chapasana if you did so other side. And then reestablish your half moon with a strong front body. Right hand to the floor, square your hips, and you'll take a big step forward of your right foot, almost like you're coming into a pyramid pose. And then your left leg goes up into the air for a standing split. So hard to lift the left leg to the ceiling with square hips. But see if you can recruit your glutes on your left side, like your left butt, to help lift it a little more. And then bend both knees, pull your kneecap in towards your forehead. You like a little snail shell in your back. Put your feet down together. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale and fold. Chair pose on your in breath. Super low. Stay low here. Exhale. Stand up. Catch your right wrist with your left hand and take your side bend over to the left, crossing your ankle. Inhale, come on up, separate your feet and your hands, and then take the other side, crossing left ankle to the right, leaning over the right. Inhale, come up. Feet are together, even though mine are separated. Exhale, twist to the left, prayer twist, don't get stuck. Inhale, stay low, arms sweep up. Exhale, prayer twist to the right. Inhale, back through the center, chair pose, Utkatasana. Fold in half as you exhale. Float right up into warrior three left side. Right leg lifts up, arms come up alongside the body, square the pelvis. Big step back, arms sweep up and over your head. And when the arms are up, straighten your front leg just to unload your left quad. And then take your twist to the left, prayer twist to the left. Last big standing pose. Pressurize your top hand down to lift your right rib cage up higher. Back leg really strengthens so you lift your right pelvic half. Then bring your hands to the floor. Left leg goes up and back. Down dog split. Ooh, feels good after the twist. And then put your foot down, squaring your hips through the process. Put your knees down. Cross your ankles. Shift your butt back behind your feet. 
scoot yourself forward. Let's take, um, let's recline to the back with control. You can squeeze your hips with your hands, round your spine, and slowly lower yourself all the way down onto your backs. Now, you know, I'll call you through some active back bends. We're only gonna do one. We're gonna do one symmetrical active back bend. But if you'd prefer to support your hips in a restorative bridge, that's a beautiful choice, okay? So either a bridge or a wheel would be beautiful choices. If you'd prefer a camel, you're welcome to come up to a camel, um, up to your knees, or flip to your belly for a bow, but I'll let you choose, okay? So you're gonna wait for an inhale to rise up, and I want you to create as much symmetry in the legs as you possibly can. Okay, so your inner thighs are rotating in and down to the floor. Yes, beautiful. Now, if you're taking a wheel, you've done so much opening through the armpits already, so use it to your advantage by moving your chest in one direction and your tail in the opposite direction. Push your hips up. Beautiful, so, so nice. And when you choose to come down, do so with grace and with control, so you're not just collapsing out of this. Tuck your chin to your chest, bend your elbows to lower to your back. So nice. Feet wide, tip your knees together. Take a couple of grounding breaths. Now, you could use that trick to stimulate the vagus nerve anytime you want. Inhaling to the top, swallowing, exhaling, and pausing. You can repeat that. Okay. Let's neutralize both the spine and the pelvis. We've done so much asymmetry, and I want to bring your hips into your pelvis into a more symmetrical state. So first I want you to just lift your feet off of the floor and with your hands cup your kneecaps and then let your legs kind of dangle off of the hands. So your elbows should be totally straight and it's almost like you're pressurizing your kneecaps into your, your fingertips, into your hands, like the thighs are trying to move away from the belly. And then shift slightly right and left and right and left. You're just tractioning the spine. And then we're going to do that therapeutic hip reset. So right hand cups around the front of the knee. Left hand pushes to the face of the left thigh. Push and pull. Press and push into the hands into knees. Knees into hands. I should say legs into hands. Hands into legs. And then switch. Left hand goes around the front of the left knee. Right hand goes to the face of the right thigh, push legs into hands, hands into legs. One more time, switch. This is really good for anyone who has asymmetric pelvic pain. Do this again. Or if you know you have like um, one leg that seems longer than the other because of asymmetry in the pelvis, this kind of thing is good for you. Okay, take the heels of the hands to the outer knees. Press your legs wide and squeeze the hands in. This should feel so good on your sacrum. And then stop. Crisscross your forearms so that, like, make an X with your forearms so that your palms face out to the sides. And then slip your hands inside of your knees. And then squeeze your knees in and push the hands out. And then one more time, hands to the outer knees, knees press out, hands squeeze in. Really opens up the base of the sacrum. This one feels like money to me. It feels so, so good. And then last time, switch. Palms to the inner knees. Squeeze the knees into the hands. Hands push out. Okay. Relax. Roll up into a seated pose. Or roll to your side and use your hands to come up. You might need to slide your butt back so you can straighten your legs and still be on your mat. I want you to bend your right knee in towards your chest. We'll take a seated spinal twist towards the front leg. I'm going to twist away from it, but you're twisting towards. So you'll all put your right hand behind you and reach your left arm up to the ceiling. 
And then you'll hook your elbow either outside of the knee or you'll cup the knee with your hand and start to rotate towards the leg. Yeah, that's it, everyone's got it. Okay, now, do you feel the pressure of your arm wants to tip your knee towards the left? Press your leg back into your arm so that it only propels your twist even more. So think your right thigh is pressing wider. Yes, good. And then think like your left hand is on a bar, like, like you're trying to do a pull up. So as you scrub your elbow down, lift your chest up a little higher. Mm -hmm. And then turn to face forward. And I want you to butterfly your knee open for Janu Shushasana. Pull your foot up to your inner thigh. And then spin your whole right pelvic calf towards the left. Rotate your belly over the, the belly of the left thigh. And then fold towards your leg so that you're feeling a stretch in your right lower back. Now, guy, rotate your left ribs up higher. Rotate your right ribs down more. Yes, exactly. Yes. And then come on up. Breathe. Little John Shirjasana. Because we need time for pigeon. So circle your left leg back. If you have padding and you want to grab it, you can. Slip it underneath your pelvis. And then just allow yourself to be in this fold. Now, if you would prefer symmetry, because you did so much asymmetry, if you want symmetry instead, you can just take ankle to knee pose. It's double pigeon, and you're really getting, that would have been smarter of me to sequence that way. But um, both will be opening the outer hips, which was what I wanted for all of your hips. chest and then rather than taking a down dog split just circle your back leg forward straighten both of your legs forward just briefly and then bend your left knee you can step your foot outside of the opposite knee if you did so on the first side left hand behind you right arm reaches up and then slip your elbow outside of the knee or cup your knee with your hand and rotate around towards your leg. So I want you to think that your right hand is attached to a rope or a pull-up bar. Pull your right elbow down your thigh, down your outer knee to help you lift the sternum up. And then breathe out your left rib so you continue the rotation of the spine. Yeah, so good. And turn to face forward. Open up your knee and bring your foot to the upper inner thigh. It's like your heel moves right into the groins. And you don't want to leave your left pelvic calf behind and just twist away from it. You want to take it with you. So there's this closing sensation of left pelvic calf twisting towards right. Like slide the belly over the belly of your right thigh and then fold towards it. So you don't want the right ribs to be collapsing down. You want to roll your right ribs up and roll the left ribs down. And then fold towards the leg so that you're feeling this pull, this opening through your left QL, quadratus lumborum, on the left side of your lower back. And then come on up. Pigeon left side. Or ankle to knee, double pigeon. But do, um, your right leg will go back if you took a pigeon on the first side. And you'll just give your hips, your outer hips, your external rotators, some love. We need it every single class. Let's take one more symmetrical pose. 
So um, you're going to do this either seated or on your back. Um, it's nice to have padding if you're going to do this on your back. It's just a forward fold. Um, it's a very modified Paschimottanasana that looks like this with your knees very bent and your armpit cupped over your kneecaps, holding onto your feet. You're either going to do this or you're going to do it on your back. It's getting really hard to do with my belly growing, so um, I'm, I'll show you just briefly, but you would put some padding underneath your mid to, to upper back, and then you do the same thing where you're putting your kneecaps into your armpits, oh, this is so hard, and you're clasping your shins with your hands. It's the same exact shape, either seated upright or on your back. It's a lovely low back opener. It's not about stretching your hamstrings. We did plenty of that. Slacken your knees, let your knees be bent. Shavasana, or you can take a seated meditation. So use your home and your sense of comfort all around you if you are taking Shavasana. Use the pillows, the blankets, the padding. And sit on something for sure if you're seated in meditation so that you can really align your spine with so much intelligence and integrity and poise and no tension. So when we are seated, we have to draw the awareness inward. And create some boundaries for your mind. It's willpower. But it is the nature of the mind to wander. It's going to continue to happen. That's what it does. But just when you notice your mind starting to think, catch yourself, release the thought, and come back to your seat. Focus your mind instead on how still you can become. And just watch your breath with this calm state of mind. Watch your inhales come.
to your recliner on your back. Let your breath start to deepen. Bend your knees, roll to one side. And come up into a seated pose. Joining the rest of us. And just observe your state of mind. Observe the energetic transformation that you've created with your practice today. into a prayer at your heart. Lift your heart and bow your head just slightly. I'll ask you a question and you can just sit with this question. But this is a practice where we really work to create more clarity in the mind um, and kind of wipe away impurities, so to speak, so that we become more clear and we become more pointed in our focus. So what will you do with the positive effects of this practice? What will you do with everything you learn in this yoga practice and with this state of peaceful clarity? What will you do with it? breathe in together. Clear it out. Inhale for OM. gratitude for this practice and deep gratitude for all of you. Namaste. Thank you all my dear friends. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you all. Um, Thanks for continuing to show up and I'll see you all soon. Okay? Take care. <laughs>